Oh Allah, I hear what you said and I'm going to obey to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Sami'na wa ata'na. And the word sami'na, it means alimna. Ta'alamt. I learned. You have to learn about what Allah wants. What His Messenger وسلم, taught. What is the path, that way, اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا The road that the Prophet walked on. What is this surat al-mustaqeem that leads to Jannah, that has no zayr, has no ambiguity, has no tangent, has no difficulty on it. سمعنا. I heard, I learned, I sat, I studied, I asked, I wondered, I pondered, I reflected, تفكرت. And then I acted. And the simplest things, my dear brother and sister, in your life are the ones that will be the greatest stumbling points on the Day of Judgment. Allah is not going to ask you about the biggest things that you worry about. He's going to ask you about the little consistent things in your life. Fajr, Isha, I want you to imagine this hadith of the Prophet Yaqulu lana al Nabiyyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kama fi Sahih. The one who doesn't pray Asr. Man lam yusalli al-Asr. Bafala amalu. His deeds for the day are all unaccepted. Do you know what that means? Yani, you can give charity. You can do whatever you want. But you miss that one prayer. Why does the Prophet say Asr? The Prophet could say Fajr, any other prayer. And Imam al-Nawawi, he tells us Asr because it's waqtu farag. Fajr, you might say, I was working all night, I'm tired. I missed it. I was sleepy. Zuhr, you will say, brother, I was driving, I was at work, I was at school, I was in class. Asr, you're getting home. It's a time of siesta, reclining, sitting back. The heat of the day has passed. People are at leisure. It's not Maghrib, where your family and everyone is coming to eat and you have to go and come. It's not Isha when it's night and dark. Ask. Simple things you are asked about. Ask. Man lam yusalli l'as. Batal amal. His deeds are, un- un- are unaccepted. Haba and manthura. Scattered. And you will come on that day and people will say, as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would hear from his Sahaba and we know from their Sunnah. The Sahaba and the Salaf, they would make dua after six months. From the end of Ramadan for six months, that Allah accepts their Siyam. Not because you fasted, it means it's accepted. And not because some of it accepted is all of it is accepted. Abdullah, wake up. Sami'na, ata'na. Second, what do you do about the things you know? You know things that are ilmun bil darura. And the Imam al Shafi'i, al ilmun aham, everyone knows it. Everyone knows you have to pray, how to pray, when to pray, do it. That is going to become the major test for you on the Day of Judgment. Third thing, which we see consistent in the life of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, is the assistance of others. Helping other people when you come to look at the whole seerah and life of the Prophet ﷺ. And you say, what is the one thing the Prophet always did? Before the wahi and after the wahi. You will see the one thing the Prophet ﷺ always did was help us. When he comes to Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And he tells her, I saw an angel and this and this. Dammiluni, give me clothes, cover me, I'm scared. She says, Ya Rasulullah, Muhammad, don't worry. La yukhzik Allahu abada. Allah will never dishonor you. Why? He asked her, why? Why do you say this? Why are you so sure? You look after Tasilul Rahim. You're good to your family. You look after me, you look after your uncles, you look after your cousins. Tahmilul kal. You carry food to those who don't have it. You feed the poor. You look after al yatim the orphan. She doesn't say, because you're, you're a good man, you're a rich man, you, people respect you. No. What does he do towards others? It's the sign of all prophets. Look at Musa alayhi salam. He comes out of the desert, escaping from Fir'aun. Two young girls. 
people are pushing them away. Our father can't help us feed our flock and give water. He gives them water. And then he sits under the shade of a tree. He doesn't ask them for anything. He gave it sadaqah. He's a man who has nothing. Comes out of the desert, not even food. He gives them. They have sheep. He could say, I will feed your hundred sheep, but give me one to feed myself. He says, Oh Allah, with everything you've blessed me, I'm still poor. Allahu Akbar. Helping others is the way to recover yourself after the month of Ramadan. The things you do in Ramadan is those three things. In Ramadan, we always go back to the essentials. What do you do in Ramadan? What did you do in Ramadan that you're not doing now? You prayed more. You helped others more. You gave charity more. You were thinking of Allah more. Ramadan ends. Pray. Continue with your salah. Continue with your ibadah. Continue helping others. Think of Allah. Have taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. I lead you this hadith of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where he says to us, and this is the constitution of the believer. He said, as long as you are helping your brother, Allah will help you. If you want, you're, you may be sitting in front of me single, no wife, no children. And you are worried, you should be worried about your children who you don't have yet. 40 years from now, how can you make sure you protect them? That they will have taqwa. By you today, helping someone and having taqwa today. Musa and Al-Khidr, they come to that moment in their journey and they see a decrepit house falling apart. And they build it back together. And Musa says to him, we could have asked them for money. He says, no, هذا فراق بيني وبينك. Let me tell you why we built this building. Under it was kanz. It's a treasure that's hidden for two orphans. Their father who's passed away. You've never met him, Musa. I've never met him. Khidr says, these young boys, they have a treasure hidden there. Allah asked us to fix the building to keep it hidden until they're old enough years later to find it and enjoy it. Why? Abuhuma Saliha. They had a good man. Their father, who has not raised them, who has not seen them, who has left them orphans, Allah protects them. They get their risk from where they don't know. They never expected it. They don't know that this was preserved and catered for them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that hadith of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu The more you help others, Allah will help you. You help others' children, Allah will send someone to help your children. You fix someone's debt, Allah will send someone to fix your debt. You hide someone's mistake, Allah will hide your mistakes. You bring farah and surur and happiness to someone, Allah will bring those who will make you happy. And this is the vow of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم واستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد محمد بن عبد الله عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم Finally because of the rain and the shortness of space if the brothers can move forward إن شاء الله make sure that there's no one sitting in the rain there's lots of room still, maybe for 20 people in our front room here, inshallah, come forward. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he lived a life of austerity and simplicity. This, of course, does not mean that enjoying the fineries of life is sinful. In fact, we are encouraged to de- exemplify the beauty that Allah has given us and to share 
the bounties that Allah has given us by making it demonstrable in our life. And in the month of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, we came together after it in a day of Eid and celebration. And the intent of it is that there is izhar, part of its intent is that we show our love and allegiance for one another. And this is something that we wish to continue as a trait after the month of Ramadan. In your spiritual development, my dear brother, after the month of Ramadan, I want you to make a decision within yourself that you branch out of your local community. If you are Arabi, it doesn't mean you have to just have your Eid with those who are Arab. It doesn't mean you just enjoy the company if you are Libyan with the Libyans. Masri ma'al Masri. And a Masri. Turkish with Turkish. No. Abdullah, our Ummah is the Ummah of all nations and all colors and all people. It hurts in our heart when a person is not treated equally amongst the rest. And in our university, I've received three different complaints from different people about not feeling included as, as part of the university and for the Student Muslim Association. I encourage us all to come together, to share with one another, and to include with each other those who from a distance may not seem like they would mix with us. But when you look at the habits of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his companions and you study their life and you see that Allah has sent for us examples in them to take lessons of today. Yuhayf Suhaib al-Rumi, Bilal al-Habashi, Salman al-Farisi, Abu Bakr al-Qurashi, Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu was salam sewed them all together in love and equity and care and concern for one another. There is no better placement for someone who is Arab or non-Arab over one another. Only Allah knows that piety. Come together, my dear brothers and sisters, in feelings of love and concern for one another. And the enjoyment that we have together should be enjoyed by us all. Finally, before I leave the mimbar, next Saturday, not tomorrow, next Saturday, I have a public lecture at the university here at Norman Duffy Lecture Hall, inshallah. It's called Building Iman. I look into the Quran and we will look at some of the places in the Quran where Allah helps us to increase our Iman. I hope that you join me in there, inshallah. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'a. Wa arina al baatila baatilan warzuqna shinaba. اللهم ارزقنا البر والهدى والتقى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة